Hello and um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to folks around Canada, mappers around Canada. We're about to start our session three for today, remote sensing and earth modeling. Uh, and we're going to be hearing today from Aaron Lee, Charles Papasodoro, Ryan Hamilton, and then Ted's going to take us into our workshop for the end of the day. Um, we're having currently um, some challenges. We have Aaron with us first, but uh, we haven't seen Charles, uh, so I'm going to be navigating that in the background. Uh, but without further ado, um, please take it away, Aaron. All right, so uh, I want to share my screen here. So uh, I'm a graduate student under Dr. Emmanuel Stefanakis from the University of Calgary. And we work with Dr. Heather McGrath from Natural Resources Canada. And uh, we've been working on a project of integration of multi-source stream data on discrete global grids in Canada. Um, so that will be topic of today's talk. So um, I would like to quickly go over the existing terrain data sets distributed by NRCAN and I'll talk about why DGGS gives us an um, opportunity to integrate and manage terrain data for Canada. So um, here are two main terrain data sets in Canada. They are CDM, short for Canadian Digital Elevation Model, and HRDM, that is short for High Resolution Digital Elevation Model. So um, here I listed some of their main differences between these data sets. Um, they have different vertical datums, they have different horizontal resolutions, and they use different methods to assign the values over the water bodies within a country. Um, say CDM have assigned the estimated elevations or their known elevations over the rivers and uh, lakes within a country. But HRDM have uh, below the forest line, they they have left the water body areas with void data. That's because the original data acquisition method of HRDM below the forest line is airborne LIDAR. So they're probably no response over the water bodies. So that's why the uh, void data is left. Another thing is the CDM has um, covered the national wide area, but HRDM is currently only available within the project footprints as marked as the red polygons on the on the right hand. So you may notice that um, below the forest line, there's only some parts of the area is covered by HRDM. So uh, the last point, the CDM and HRDM has different data accuracy. And HRDM is obviously have higher data accuracy than CDM. So um, problem would arise when the potential end users would like to use both of the data sets. So they may come across the time consuming and duplicated pre-processing and they may um, end up with inconsistent integration results for their following analysis or applications. Uh, another thing is the current data collection has limited resolution options. So that means in Canada, the integration solution is highly in need to merge and quality control the terrain data on a standardized framework. And DGGS gives us such an opportunity to manage and quality control the terrain data. So here, DGGS is short for Discrete Global Grid Systems. And it is defined as a spatial reference system that uses a hierarchical tessellation of cells to partition and address the globe. Um, I would like to point out some of the key features that makes it as a uniform data model to integrate geospatial information that is independent of the original source. The first one, um, the cells are uniform. So that makes it is a as a single cons consistent framework with constant spatial resolution at each grid level. Um, the second one, the cells are spherical instead of the um, projected or flat cells. So from this perspective, it outperforms the, say, the traditional projected rasters because it's hard to define a single projected system that to minimize distortions over a large landscape such as Canada. 
Um, it also accounts for the, the Earth's curvature so that potential computational errors can be avoided over a large landscape. Another, another point, um, the cells are discrete as the, the, the name suggested. So it facilitates the parallel computing and parallel computing can be very valuable if we are dealing with a large volume of data. Uh, last point, the DGS has a hierarchical structure. That means uh, the grid can be further subdivided into smaller grids. So it naturally offers multiple resolution options. So um, I would like also mention that from the perspective of DGS applicability, the DGS haven't got sufficient attention in the GIS community and, and it's um, in a nascent period of supporting decision making in the real world. So that's why uh, we are looking for scenarios and uh, situations that we can apply DGS and to solve some real world um, problems. So that brings us to the objectives of this research. That is to integrate Canadian Turing data at multiple resolutions by using DGGS. And the, out, uh, the outcomes can potentially set the stage for the National Elevation Service in future. So here's the DGGS configuration that is deployed in this research that is called ICS-RICH. And here I represent um, exahedron. It has, well, it is the one of the five most commonly used planetonic solids to construct the DGS. And it has 20 phases. It, um, uh, compared to the other planetonic solids, it has the smallest phase area. It has the smallest interior angles. So that, that lead to uh, less angular distortions when being projected to a datum. Um, here, according to the previous studies, the Snyder equal area projection can lead to less area and shape distortion. So this projection is used in this um, research. Um, hexagon has been chosen as the cell geometry in, in the um, in, in this oscillation. So compared to the other cell shape like triangles or diamonds, the hexagon has the greatest angular resolution. So it, ha um, it is optimally compact and it has uniform adjacency. Um, after three means the refinement ratio between the um, resolution levels equal to three. And uh, a smaller refinement ratio can lead to smoother transition between resolution levels. And uh, the after three hexagonal grid has another um, important characteristics. It is monotonically convergent. So that means um, the, the representing center of the cell is infinitely closer to the point to be modeled on the grid and uh, uh, on, the, on the final resolutions. So that, that would be very important in the modeling process. Uh, regarding the orientation of the grids relative to the Earth, um, here's a recent study have proposed a, um, an orientation with these three parameters so that the Canadian border can be centered in one single phase of the exhedron. So that, that can help to further reduce the, uh, the, the distortion of projection. So uh, here's the workflow of the modeling process. It has generally five steps. And the first step is to acquire the original data sets. That is CDM and HRDM. And they can be acquired by the stack API and HRDM mosaic, depending on the area of interest. And the pre-processing aims to standardize the horizontal datum and the vertical datum to NAT 83 CSRS and CGVD 2013, respectively. So um, the quantization means to assign the elevation values to the DGGS cells. To do that, we need to firstly find out the cell centers within the area of interest and do resample with um, bilinear interpolation over these locations of the cell centers. 
And in this study, um, I did quantization from level 29 to level 60. And the cell areas range from 0.74 square meters to 1.2 square kilometers. Another thing I would like to mention is um, on the coarser levels, the vertical resolutions are gradually reduced um, on the coarser levels, like from level 28 to 16. So as the flow chart show here, we'll have the both CDM and HRDM values attached with the cell at first. Then we need to apply an integration strategy so that we uh, will have only one elevation values attached with each of the cell. So in this research, we stick with the HRDM value um, wherever they are available. That's simply because they have um, higher data quality than CDM. After quantization, um, we can do aggregation on the course levels, which means to calculate the mean, the maximum and minimum values of the child cells and assign the values to their parent cell at the immediately coarser level. So um, the maximum and the minimum elevation values can potentially serve different application purposes. Um, regarding quality control, we calculated the root mean square errors by comparing the ground control points to the pre dgs elevations and post dgs elevations. And these calculated RMSE can um, serve as the data accuracy indicators in the spatially referenced metadata. Um, I did some experiment over two study areas in Ontario to test the modeling process. So here's the um, ICSRH translation at different scales from the Canada among the worldwide landmass to two specific areas in Ontario. And these study areas are 1.5 by 1.5 degrees. One of them is around Algonquin Provincial Park, another one is around the city of Toronto. So here's, uh, here are the um, blue rectangles. They represent the spatial distribution of HRDM data set foot points within the study area. And the red dots are the locations of the, uh, the ground control points that are obtained from the Ontario Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry. So um, I would like to quickly go over the experiment results. Um, here's the visualization of the quantization results at the finance level over two study areas. And here are the aggregation results at the chorus level over two study areas. You may notice the difference between the representations um, by different aggregation method. So um, regarding the quality control, the calculated RMAC comparing the ground control points versus pre dgs elevations, the, they are generally lower over the urban area and the lower one, the original data source or HRDM. So with the released data source as the baseline, I calculate the RMSE by comparing the pre dgs values versus post dgs values. Uh, and they are generally lower when we move into finer resolution levels. So, and they are um, as low as 0.05 and 0.04 over two study areas, respectively. Um, impact of the research. As I mentioned earlier, this, uh, the outcome of this research can potentially set the stage for national elevation service across various scales for Canada. By integrating multiple terrain data sources, we can have a complete coverage over the country and we can improve the data quality than the pure CDM data. Um, with the, with this, these data integrated, we can um, save the end users time on pre-processing and provide them with the constant spatial terrain data 
for their following applications or analysis. Um, by adoption of DGS, we'll have multiple resolution options and we avoid the projected terrain rasters. By integrating the CDM, we will have no voice over the water body. So uh, finally, there are some three take home messages. Uh, first of all, uh, we explore the utility of DHS for enabling a national elevation service for Canada. Um, second one, DHS are advantages because of their discrete, uniform, spherical, and hierarchical cells. And lastly, future work includes some development of analytical functions in DGGS. Um, that can include like topographical analysis and hydrological analysis directly in the context of hexagonal grids. Um, and uh, future work also include the DGS powered data cube means to extend the elevation, um, elevation DGS to a uh, data cube so we can potentially have more analysis ready data that can offer to that can be offered to the end users. With that, we can probably support some decision making in the real world. And um, that's pretty much from me. Um, I'd like to thank you for your attention. Thanks very much for your presentation, Aaron. And uh, just a reminder to everyone to throw your comments uh, and your questions into the chat. And Aaron, you can stop sharing your screen if you'd like. Yeah, great. Mm -hmm. And so still no questions in the chat yet, but uh, we'll give it a few minutes to let them trickle in. I, I think, so you've used the hex model, haven't you? Yeah, the uh, hexagonal grids, right. Uh, it, I do know that um, in our poster sessions, um, and there was another, um, there was a poster in there, I think Jack Baker, who studied um, culturally important seaweeds uh, in the Salish Sea between Vancouver Island and uh, the mainland. He used the hex grid as well. So if mm. you guys would like, you go check that out. Yeah, that sounds <clears> interesting. <throat> Do you know is that a um, DGGS or do, do, does he use the like, multiple resolutions or is um, like a fixed resolution of hexagonal grids? I'm not sure. I think that's probably a great question for Jack. Mm -hmm. We did get a question in from Roger Wheat um, from UNBC. Will the Canada HR DEM soon include the Alberta Provincial LIDAR DEM? Uh, that I think that will be a good question for Charles. He's the uh, team leader of the HRDM project. Probably he'll provide more information about the HRDM per se in his presentation. Mm 